testing. Yes. Good morning. Hello. Is anybody out there? Good morning. Faith Family Church. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in God's house with your family today? It is so good to be in God's house with all the ones who love him, all the ones who praise him, all the ones who glorify him, and all the ones who'll do the same thing to you. Well, I can't get no help in here. Are you, you preaching today? I hope you get some help. I'm telling you. I just want to open up this morning real quickly with just a couple things. want to make sure that you know that you are loved beyond measure by the God who is here, but also by the people who are here. And that everything that you do today is going to be an awesome experience for you. Not only are you going to be blessed in the hour or two that you're here, but you're going to be blessed for the rest of the day when you go home. You're going to be blessed tomorrow at work. You're going to be blessed the day after, amen, and by your family. You're going to, God is going to pour out blessings upon you that you don't even have room to receive. Hallelujah. But today as we enter in, we want to do it right. How many of y'all want to go in God's house the right way? Let me just read to you just a couple of scriptures real quick. It's uh, uh, Psalms 100. Verse 4, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. How many of y'all want to go in God's gates this morning? Enter into his gates. God says, come in. But you know how he wants you to do it? With thanksgiving. Man, listen, as we worship and praise this morning and give God the glory, we ought to be thankful for all that we have and all that's coming. So we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and we come into his courts. Now see, after you go through the gate, you don't stop outside. How many of y'all have gates at your house? How many of y'all go through your gate and stop right there and you don't go any further? No, you go into the courts, right? You go into the house. It says come into his courts with praise what is praise to God how do we praise him what is that you know what it is it's recognizing him and giving him credit and glory and honor for not only who he is but for what he does it's praising him for his goodness his grace his love his mercy his abundance we come into his courts with praise. We are thankful to him and we bless his name. For the Lord is good. Somebody say that for me this morning. Just look at your neighbor and tell him, say, the Lord is good. He answers prayer, does he not? Does he not answer prayer? He answers prayer. Amen. And when he does, he is faithful to answer it the way that he says he was. The, the, the way he said he would. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures for all generation. Man, we don't know how good we got it. By loving the Lord. And by abiding in his love and his life for us. So today, I just want to give you freedom and liberty to worship God today with all that is within you. All that is within you. You can stay right where you are. You can get up and you can move around. You can stay on, on two feet or you can start to dance. I don't know if y'all have ever seen my wife dance or not, but she dances on occasion. Hallelujah. She ain't never done it out at the bar, but she does it in here. Thank God. But I just want to give you all the momentum, all everything that you need, the freedom and the liberty just to worship God and let this day be the day that he has made 
for you to rejoice and be glad. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray this, this, this morning, and then we'll go straight into to praise and worship. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, Father, and we are moved, God, by your love. We are moved, God, by your grace. We are moved, God, by love and mercy, by everything being poured out, Father God, that's needed. Lord, we come before you today knowing who you are and knowing what you do and knowing that you are God, the one and the only who was and is and is to come. And so today, with everything that's in us, with everything that's in our heart, our soul, our mind, and in our strength, God, we are going to worship you today and give you the, the glory and the honor that you deserve. And Lord, as we do that, Father, fill this place with your spirit. Fill it with your presence, God. And pour out everything that's needed to every individual in this house. God, let people's hearts be touched and let them be changed for their lives. For eternity, God. For your glory. And Father, we thank you for it. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Now, one more thing. Tell him. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, I'm going to worship you with all that's in me today. Come on, tell him. Tell him the truth. Say, I'm going to worship you today greater than I ever have before. And I'm going to receive from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Drawn 
plans for me are good and I know you hold my future and my hope your promises never fail your promises never fail your promises never fail your promises never fail I know your thoughts your plans for future and my hope. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail.
rise up towards the Lord. And as you lift your hands in one way, he he connects. He touches your hands with his hands. And you'll feel a presence in this house that is greater than you'll ever know. There's nothing in this earth that can even touch the grace and the mercy and the goodness that you receive from your God. I'm not saying the earth is a bad thing or a bad place, but I'm telling you, our God, there's nothing like him. The Lord has laid something on my heart during praise and worship this morning. I'm just going to go ahead and share it with you because it's so special. We look at the blessings of God. We look and we say, God, you know, I need this, I need that. Oh, God, give me this, give me that. Lord, you know I'm sick. Heal me, God. You know that I, 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 I have a bill due, God. You know I need, I need uh, a provision, God. You, you know, we do all the things that we need to do. There's nothing wrong with that. Please don't take me wrong. All those things are vital. All those things are important. But the Lord wants to do something in you this morning that goes far beyond those types of things. It's great that you have joy. It's wonderful that you're in peace. It's, it's so good, amen, that he is gracious and kind. But what the Lord is wanting to do through your outstretched hand this morning is to pour his love into you. What the Lord told me this morning, he says, he says, I am increasing my love in the hearts and in the minds of my people. get that this morning? He is increasing his love in you so that it will flow through you and out of you into the ones that need it. You're going to grow in love this morning and people who for years you've thought I don't understand God why isn't this happening it's going to happen through you love is going to overflow we see blessings in every area. We see things come. We see things go. But we say, God, I just want to live and to love the way that I'm supposed to, God. I just want to be Jesus who you are. Jesus said, come. Come. Come and receive what I have for you today. Come and be blessed and moved by what I have for you today. children of God, you're going to be loved greater, you're going to receive love greater than you've ever received before from your Father, but it's not going to stop there, it's going to flow through people as well, out of you into people, but get this, out of people into you, greater than you've ever received before. 
greater than you've ever received before. It is the goodness and the grace of God that brings it about. So I don't want to take up a whole lot of time. I know that we've got some stuff going on this morning I'm really excited about. But uh, as we're just in this atmosphere, I just feel like there's a couple things that I, I, I need to say. Um, so this last song that we just did has become one of my favorite songs. I know it's my wife's favorite. Um, and there's a, there's a part in it that says, you came running down my prodigal road. And I know that the prodigal son story is a, a popular one. It's one that we all know really well. We talk about it a lot. And I think the reason why is because the prodigal son story is our story, right? Everyone in here was the prodigal son. Each one of us was the one who decided to do it our own way, to go and live the life the way that we felt like it needed to be lived. And then we had to come back to the Father. But but I believe there's two things that God wanted me to tell you about this story, and, and it may be things that you already know or you already think about, and that's totally fine, but if it's not, then maybe this will offer you something. The first thing is this. The prodigal son, the entire way back, even before he makes the decision to go back, as he is on his knees eating with the pigs, he begins to formulate a plan of how he is going to approach reconciliation. He begins to formulate a plan of how he's going to even approach the subject with his father. And his plan is to go back to his father's house, to go to his father and to beg for forgiveness and not to be reinstated as son, but to be hired as a servant. Right, and, and there's been a lot of people for a long time who have talked about this idea and talked about the idea that the father had a different plan because when the father sees the son and when the, they have a conversation and the son begins to say, this is who I am now. I am no longer, I, I, I have forsaken the identity of son and I have chosen the identity of servant. The father's reply is no. I refuse to allow that to be your identity. You need to know who you are. But I want to take it a step further tonight because in addition to the father, who in case you are unaware, this is the God character in the story. Instead of God saying, just simply saying, this is who you are. The plan is blown up before it ever begins. The plan is blown up. The son's plan is blown up before it ever begins. Because the son's plan is, I'm going to go to my father's house and I'm going to ask. But that plan never even begins because the son never makes it home. The father meets him on the road. And I think there's some people in here this morning who you feel so unworthy of anything that you feel like God has ever told you is possible for your life. And you have looked at the things that you have done, the circumstances that you've gotten yourself in, and you've said, because of this failure, I'll never be who I'm supposed to be. But I'm here to tell you, not only is this a father that welcomes you back, it's a father that will meet you before you ever even get there to tell you how much he loves you and to tell you who you are and to proclaim those same things over you that he always has. His plans for you have not changed. That is the kind of love that he has for you. So that's number one thing that I felt like he wanted me to share with you. Here's the second thing. How many of you believe that Jesus, God, that that the way that they do things, we are supposed to emulate them. We are supposed to be like them. How many of you agree? Everyone? Cool. So the question becomes this, who in your life needs you to get out of the house and run and meet them on the road? Who needs that? Who in your life needs you to do that for them? 
Because if he did it for you, then the only option is for you to do it for someone else. So who in your life needs love like that? Who in your life needs to be welcomed back like that? Who in your life needs you to say, I'm not going to sit and wait. They can come back to me. No, 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 no. You go to them. Who needs that? So this morning, bow your heads and begin to ask the Father. I know Dustin's going to do something kind of different. He's going to get you to, to, to have communion with the Father this morning. And I'm not trying to step on your toes, man. I'm sorry. But ask him this morning, Father, who? Who is that person? Who are those people? Maybe it's someone you work with. Maybe it's a, an old friend. Maybe it's a family member. But who is it that I've been sitting around waiting for them to come to me to make things right? And I wasn't wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. But I'm sick of sitting around and I want to do something. I want to be proactive in restoring the love and the relationship. Who can I reach out to? Who can I run after? Ask him this morning. Get him to show you. Because there is a dying and a hurting world. And we have one mission, and it's to love them. That is the only call. That is the only call in your life, is to love them better. So Father, this morning, reveal to us those who we have, we, we have allowed pain that they have caused us to make us reclusive, to keep us locked in our own houses, afraid of opening up, because what if they hurt me again? This morning, I believe that, that you are wanting to restore relationships. I believe you are wanting to restore relationships between you and your children, and I believe that you are wanting to restore relationships between your children. So speak to our hearts this morning. Give us the boldness. Give us the boldness to make the first move. It's the hardest thing to do. It's a saying, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It's the hardest thing to do. But give us the boldness, the courage to do it. Allow love to, to swell in our hearts. Allow it to be the only thing that matters as we pursue you and as we spread that love to everyone. More and more make it the cry of our hearts more and more help us to line up with who you are help us to follow your example help us to become more and more like you I'm going to give you just a few more minutes just talk to the father he can handle whatever question you have he can handle any comment you want to make. You're not going to scare him. You're not going to shock him. Just have a real conversation with him. of this service. Help us to continue to do the things that you like so that you'll stay.
gosh, y'all could be seated. Oh, everybody is seated. <clears throat> cool. We're going to go straight into it and do offering at the end. Is that okay with everyone? All right, we're going to do something really different today. Uh, can I get somebody to pass out them clipboards at the door? Maybe two of y'all? <clears throat> And while they do that, can I read something to y'all? Something that really inspired me years ago, uh, <clears throat> I think 2015. Has anybody ever heard of Wendy Ellick? <clears throat> She's the uh, owner of God TV. Uh, it was years ago, she went through a pretty traumatic experience where uh, <clears throat> her husband left her and she was, uh, had a, I forget the name of the disease, but she had a disease for like 18 months where she was nauseous for 18 months. <clears throat> And so in, in that experience as she was coming out, the Lord began to give her like extraordinary encounters with him when she, she actually had visitations to heaven, if you believe in that kind of stuff. So I want to read uh, one, of the, one of the encounters she had. It says, Jesus walked towards a figure surrounded by light in one of the rows near the front. A woman stepped out into the nave to meet him. It was though the entire assembly of heaven drew a breath. <clears throat> For this woman wore an aura of holiness and authority and power as would beget a, beget a great regent, a great queen of the earth. I could not see her face. Her head was covered with a veil. Then I watched stunned as angels fell, uh, even bowed before her. <clears throat> Jesus even bowed in honor of her. She continued along up the nave straight towards the throne in the brilliance of white light. In my earthly mindset, I became uneasy thinking at any moment, surely she would someone would stop her, an angel or something, uh, would stop her in her stead, but she continued walking towards the throne. <clears throat> she walked directly into the brilliance of light, into the center of where the Father's outline was dimly, dimly visible, until her entire form disappeared. Who is she, I asked in awe. Jesus smiled tenderly at me and looked at her, deeply moved, and said, she is my Father's friend, he whispered. Jesus raised and the scenery changed, and I watched as a plain black-haired babe was born to a single mother in Scotland during the First war, uh, World War. She was placed in an orphanage. She was put in service at the age of 10, raped by the men of the house at age 14. She cried so many tears of anger, rage, and helplessness in her small, dark, cold room. She had a great calling, a calling to us, said the Lord softly. <clears throat> she would have come to me so much, uh, my father much sooner if some of our children had been less sensitive, more sensitive and less concerned with their own four walls and needs. She was married at 15, had nine children. She was regularly beaten by her alcoholic husband. Finally, he left her penniless. I nodded in Jesus' motion for me to continue watching. <clears throat> I watched as she worked day and night, scrubbing and cleaning to keep her children, going weaker and weaker through the years, eventually losing her health. I saw her children abandon her, breaking her heart, and she was eventually placed in a workhouse. Jesus smiled and nodded. You are wondering what place she holds with us when we held no place in her life for so many years. She was left to die, Jesus said, <clears throat> unloved and abandoned. I followed his gaze back to the woman in the workhouse. Finally, beloved, she was visited in the workhouse by one of our faithful servants who told her, told her about me. She was given one small New Testament and and even in her frail and dying state, she clung to whatever word she could. She began to call my name day and night, night and day. In her utter desperation and fear and desolation of soul, she cried out to us. Tears welled up in Jesus' eyes. <clears throat> and so, beloved, her plaintive cries reached us right here in the throne room. I rushed to her bedside. She was in final stages of dying. She could, she could see clearly into the spirit realm. And she grasped my robe and said, oh, heal me, sweet Jesus. And th in that moment, she reached out her hand and said, help thine my unbelief. <clears throat> she was healed, I said in awe, watching as she grew stronger and then saw her leaving the workhouse and working once more as a maid, now healthy and strong. And oh, she was forever, forever changed. I said, this is wonderful, Lord, such a salvation in the most dire of circumstances. But I still don't understand how she could, could Jesus smiled patiently how she could walk straight to, up to the Father's throne and nestle in his breast in front of the entire assembly of heaven. I nodded and followed Jesus' gaze. 
The woman knelt in her tiny attic bedroom, her hands raised, her first face shining in complete and utter adoration and worshiping the Father. <clears throat> you are glorious, all glorious, holy, holy, you are beautiful, she would utter. Then she would blow him kisses and lean her head on his breast like a small child with his mother. And always, always she would sing love songs to the Father. And then I saw the scenery change and watch her worship and childlike adoration move and turn into a, a flame of fire, a used flame of white incense through the roof, through the skies of the earth and through the heavens, and the white flame come up to the altar before the Father's throne. <clears throat> and then I saw an incredible thing. The Father was in council with Jesus, and all around the councils of heaven were in session. But now the Father raised his hand, and his only focus being the sweet, sweet, burning white, incense-like flame that burned on the altar. And it was as though he grasped Jesus' hand in gratitude again for the terrible sacrifice on Golgotha. And the incense was brought to him, and the father took it and brought it to his chest, and it became the woman. And she was there in the father's embrace, kissing his hand <clears throat> and face and laying her head against his chest. And how deeply he was moved, how profoundly he was touched by the great love and adoration for him. Then I saw back in the bedroom, it was around 3 o'clock a.m., she was deeply asleep, and I saw the father yearning for her fellowship. She would spend most nights talking to him, not praying, not petitioning, but sharing with him her most intimate secrets as a father and a daughter. And in turn, he would share his most intimate secrets of his bride and of his son. And in turn, she would pray and she would intercede for the church. But this night she was asleep. But how the father longed for her. And I saw angels dispatch, and they came up the stairs to her bedroom and gently, gently woke her up. <clears throat> And the father fellowship with his beloved. And each night in her small, sparsely furnished bedroom, she would lay a dinner plate for the father and sit there and share her innermost secrets with him. Wasn't that beautiful? <clears throat> I think it was 2015. I was in Brazil and I read that. <clears throat> and I realized that my calling was to be his friend, as is yours also. Uh, we're going to do something shortly totally different uh everybody got a clipboard <clears throat> cool uh what i do want to say before we go into this <clears throat> is how many know that hebrews 13 i think three or four or five says that he would never leave us nor ever forsake us right everybody know that's true correct but how many of you have ever experienced when it didn't seem like he was there it seemed like he was totally alone i can remember years ago uh, the Lord worked something in me. As a man, I like to fix problems. And if I can't fix a problem, I feel helpless. So let's take, for instance, I was praying with someone who had cancer, and I would pray and pray and pray, and they, they, wasn't, they wasn't getting healed. So what did I do? I withdrew myself from them because I was actually ashamed that healing wasn't manifested. I couldn't fix the problem, so therefore I withdrew myself. And the Lord told me, said, hey, the most important thing is you're there. You're there with the person. I can, I can face almost anything when I know he's with me. And one of the enemy's tactics in our life is to do what? Separate. Separate. Make us feel like an orphan. Why? Because he was the first orphan. He was the original orphan. So Jesus came back to reconcile an orphan, sons and daughters, back to the glorious father. He says in John 14, he says, hey, I'm sending another, I'm sending Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor know him, but you know him for he will be with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I'm coming to you. This whole thing's about reconciliation because in the beginning you was made in union with God. God breathed his spirit, his ruach inside of you and you and him became one. Adam and Eve was one with the father. Complete oneness. But when we chose to follow the kingdom of darkness, all of a sudden, that oneness was now broken. We could still have fellowship. People would still fellowship with the Father, but that oneness that he desired was broken. So the whole Old Testament is woven together. How could I again make my people a temple where I can dwell in them? Revelation says the tabernacle of God is with man. His desire is to live inside of you. So he sent Jesus. Jesus came, paid the price for our sin because sin separated us from God. In which way? Most people think that God, when he sees sin, he runs. He didn't run with Adam and Eve, but it, it messes our perception up. Can I say something that's my opinion? <clears throat> when Jesus died on the, on the cross, <clears throat> it says, why have you forsaken me, correct? What's funny about that is 
I don't know how many hours before he told Pilate, he said, hey, I'm here because this is the will of the Father. He said, if I call out to him, he'll send a legion of angels, right? So he knew he wasn't forsaken. But on that cross, when the weight of sin was upon him, he was relating as a man who was separated from God because of sin. His perception was, was messed up. God was there, but he's like, God, God, why have you forsaken me? And when sin was paid for, we was cleansed. We, be, we once again became the temple of God. 1 Corinthians six seventeen said, he was joined to the Lord as what? One spirit with him. Right? How closer can you get than one? Can anything separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? Can sin? When you sin, does he leave you? He doesn't, right? And this is going to be real important in this coming time. Chaos going around. We need to feel like we are wrapped with him and in him and he is in us. We have to carry this revelation really strong. It's going to be very important. So, if he is in us, why don't we get to experience the benefits of that reconciliation, of that union? Can I give you a few reasons? I want to take this... The, Joseph right quick. Joseph lied. Him and his mother deceived his brother Esau. So Esau wanted to kill him. So what did Joseph do? Joseph ran, right? Correct? So Joseph shows Jacob, sorry. Jacob ran and all of a sudden Jacob was at a, a place called Luz, which is if you look it up, it's almond uh, nut, a place of nuts. He got to this place. Can you imagine what he was going through? Chaos. Like I'm, I'm afraid for my life. <clears throat> Focusing on the situation. All of a sudden he goes to sleep that night. And God had to wait till he was calm where his mind wasn't running. running. And he came to him and he saw a ladder that, that went from heaven to earth. And in that ladder, God gave him a word and, and, and he woke up. <clears throat> and he said, the Lord was in this place and I didn't even know it. In your life, the Lord is with you, but sometimes you don't know it. Why? Because we're focused on a problem and not the promise. Like, J like Jacob was, he had to wait till he was sleeping to reveal, no, I'm here. And it's something, what was crazy about it is he went from a place of chaos and what did he wake up and say, how awesome is this place? Nothing changed about a situation, but now the person was hit with him. Peace is not the absence of problems, but the presence of a person. So all of a sudden, he rested in peace and he changed the name of that place. This is no longer a place of nuts. This is Bethel, the house of God. This is a place where I met with him. He was here already, but he revealed to me that he is here because I was focused on all these other things. So in your life, <clears throat> what happens is we get focused on everything else. I want to do something. Close your eyes right now. In a worship service, how many of you love when there's a corporate anointing, you could just feel the anointing in the room? It's amazing, right? You could just tap into that. But that's not always the case, even in your personal prayer time. So what I used to do, I used to spend my time trying to get God to come in the room. And I realize now that he's already here. He's with me and he's upon me. So what I want you to do right now, according to the promise of God that he's in you and upon you, become aware of his presence. All right, we're going to have more time for that in a second, but uh, can anybody sense a shift? Now, the, 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 if you have a long time not been focused on him, it might take you a little longer. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's long, and that's practicing the presence of God right there. So <clears throat> you're focused on his presence. You can do that throughout the whole day. Stop. God, you're upon me. You never leave me. And just become aware of that presence. Then he began to rest upon you more and more. And all of a sudden, I know this is out there, but people will start getting healed around you and not, you're not even praying. The next thing uh, that stops you from experiencing that connection is sin. But not on his part, your part. The Bible said that sin does what? Hardens your heart. 
You'll be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, Hebrews 3. I'll give you, I'll give you a testimony with me when I first got saved. There was a certain sin I kept falling into. And when I would, it would feel like, <clears throat> excuse me what I'm about to say, but it felt like my spirit man had an enema, flushed. It's like I couldn't sense God. He felt so far away. It was crazy. So what I would do, I would spend hours upon hours praying and reading my Bible to try to get him to come back. I mean, it would take like five days before I had that connection again. <clears throat> it was miserable. So I can remember one day I was in the process. I think it was on day four or five, but I still was like, oh, I mean, I'm on my fifth hour of reading and praying. And a friend of mine walks in my door and the Holy Spirit just smacks him. He's like, whoa. He said the presence of God was so strong in here. I'm like, okay. Sin hardened my senses and hardened my heart. But he's still here. He still, he didn't go away. And it was such a relief to me. But what sin does, remember Jesus talked about sin. It could be a plank in your eye, a speck in that eye. Imagine if I'm living in a lifestyle of unrepentant sin, and I come to you, I'm trying to help you. All I'm doing is banging you around with my plank. And this is why me, I'm so strong about leaders trying to live above reproach by his grace. Not perfect, but like repentance. Because if I'm blind, you following me, we're both blind. Where do we go? Into a ditch. So, we, so there's some things you need to lay down, lay down, and lay down. So what, what, what are some things we can do before we get into what we're going to do? <clears throat> that way you become aware of, aware of his presence. The first thing I showed you, right? Become aware of him in you throughout the day, practice in his presence. Then when you're in worship and you don't feel that corporate anointing, you could tap into what's already there. <clears throat> the next thing you could do is Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is what? Living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul, spirit, and of joints and marrow, which is, marrow, which is flesh. So the word of God, reading of your word, sharpens your spiritual senses. So you could tell the difference between what's spirit, what's soul, and what's flesh. Hebrews, I think it's 5.14-ish. 15, I don't know. Uh, it says that through reason of use, you have your senses exercised to discern both good and evil. For instance, if you want to operate in words of knowledge, how do you do it? Reason of use. There's a trial and error at first. But as you continue to do it, all of a sudden, your spiritual senses get exercised. Cool? All right. Let's go on to the next thing. What I'm going to do today is something I learned first off at an a inner healing class that I was taking through Global Awakening United Theological Seminary. And then we did it again when I went to uh, Pennsylvania. It's called two-way journaling. Because the Lord really dealt with me about uh, whenever I preach to really equip people. Really equip them. Not just give them a word, but equip them to, to take stuff home and connect with them at home. So he put this on my heart, which I, I was like, oh, God. This is Louisiana. This is the Bible Belt. People don't take wineskins, new wineskins too easily. It's just how it is. And so I was hesitant, but I see, I know everybody here. It seems like leaders, <clears throat> so which is great. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, uh, I'll explain what it is. It's so easy. You're going to write something to God, and he's going to say something back. Pretty easy, right? But sometimes when he does it, have you, anybody ever operated a Nabe flow of prophecy before? You didn't know what you were going to say next? It just came out? Well, sometimes it's like you begin to start writing. He might give you a word or two, and all of a sudden you're Nabeing yourself. You're getting a word for yourself from God, which scares people because they're like, oh, how do you know that's God talking? Easy. And we'll, we'll go over that in a second. We'll go over why. How do you know with anything? How I many you know that any revelation you get has to be tested first and foremost by what? the word. Then also it's good to have people in your life to run it by also. So uh, I'm going to stick on that a second to explain uh, how to get revelation from God. A lot of us already know this, but whenever you're ministering to people in witchcraft, the occult, a question they will ask you is, who's your medium? They'll ask you that. A lot of times you tell them Jesus, they'll still let you minister to them. But they, they need to know a medium. What, how many know that we have a medium? 
Did you know that? Jesus Christ is what? No man comes to the Father except through Jesus. He's the mediator. So in other words, how do I know if I'm getting revelation from the Father? If I'm going through the person of Jesus Christ. New Age occult doesn't do that. They go through the, the philosophies of the age, through drugs, uh, chanting, different things. That becomes their medium. Now, if I go that direction, how do I know? What, do I, what am I tapping into? No telling. But if I go through Jesus, I know what I'm tapping into in, any, in anything that you do. That's why Jesus has to be preached more than anything or you get off into some weird stuff. So what we're going to do... <clears throat> It, this is based on uh, Habakkuk 1, 1 through 2. I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, I will stand and watch and set myself as a rampart and watch to see what the Lord will say and will answer me when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets. So what we want to do first is <clears throat> the first key is I will stand at the guard post or rampart. <clears throat> Rampart, uh, when I looked it up, a confined place, a, separ a, a separated place, right? So your secret place. He says when you go, when, Jesus said when you go to the Father, shut the door, right, in a secret place. What does that mean? Turn off as many distractions as you can, as you can. If you're driving, don't turn all of them off, but you know what I mean. So you set yourself on the rampart, okay, stillness. God, I'm still before you. I cut off all these distractions, and I'm going to sit here with you right now. Then it says, I'll keep watching and see. So now you're looking. See means perceive. You're looking for God to speak. You're looking. You're waiting. You're looking for vision. You're looking for inspired thought. You're perceiving what the Lord's going to say. The next thing is uh, what he will speak to me. Next thing, he, they, they said it this way, spontaneity. Fix your eyes on Jesus and listen for the voice of God and look for a flowing thought. John 7 says what? If any among you are thirsty, come to who? Me and drink, and out of your belly will what? So as you're sitting there, you're focusing on Jesus, you're focusing on the Father. New age meditation is emptying your mind. But meditation with Christian meditation is putting stuff in your mind as far as the Word or just a focus on Him. So that's what you want to do. You want to create stillness. You want to focus on a connection with Jesus or the Father. Then you want to listen for inspired thought <clears throat> or a vision. It could be a picture. A lot of times with this is going to be an, an inspired thought. And when that happens, then you write down. It says the next part, take the vision, write it down. I know this, that when I begin to write what God's speaking to me down, more stuff started coming because I was faithful. How many of you know that you forget? Has the Lord ever spoke something to you in the morning and by the evening you already forgot? Yeah. So this right here is... Uh, it's something that I use, and there's, there's really an hour I should go talk more about this, but I'm not. I believe y'all got it. It looks like mature Christians in here. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do it, okay? What I want to do uh, is read something to y'all. I'm going to read one of mine. I don't do this often. I have friends that do it every day. This is one that uh, is really vulnerable. Uh, most of the time when I do it and when my prayer time, I know what truth is. And so I just come and I'm like proclaiming truth even when I feel the opposite. But this time I was in a vulnerable place and I just was, I laid it out. So this is me and, me and the Father's interaction. Hey, Father, I so love you. You are who you are. Father, it has been so hard for me to focus on you lately. I feel like I have a constant sinus infection. I feel weary. I find my, my, uh, my willpower is low. My hunger for you feels like it's waning, but I don't want it to. I don't understand everything, but deep down, I want to be with you. I really need your grace. You have been my constant. Your presence has been my comfort. I wouldn't want to live without you. I really love you and really need you. This is his response. My son, don't doubt your love for me because it is a response of my love for you. You are doing great. Just don't give up. I am forging some things in you to sustain you in the future for the future things that are coming. You will find me in new ways, exciting ways, ways that you not, have never even thought of. You need new wineskins 
to how is our relationship and intimacy. <clears throat> and I say, Father, I know what you're saying is true, but it's not always easy. I just need reassurance that I'm on the right track. I don't want to do my own thing, but I find myself doing it a lot lately. You are right. I have had the same wineskins for a long time, but I'm open for something different. Please lead me there. I want to live in the reality of our constant connection. And this is him. <clears throat> Son, connect, uh, connection is what you was created for. There is never a moment that we are separate. Separation is an illusion that the enemy used to make you feel abandoned. You have done well knowing that I'm always with you, even when you don't feel me, but you can find me to a section off secret place time to receive from me to keep you the whole day. But I'm now teaching you to, to abide and to carry the garden with you. There is a flow of life shared within the Godhead that you are invited into, you and I and I and you, but you only experience small measures because you have not yet learned how to abide in me constantly, but you will. I have called you to be my friend. And I said, Father, I... I don't feel like I'd, I feel like I've done a horrible job at being your friend. And he says, my friends has never, have never been perfect, but it's a heart to really know, know me for no other reason but to know me. That brings me great delight. How many would say that that's encouraging? And I needed to hear it. I needed to hear it. <clears throat> so if you can, just get your uh, notepad. A lot of times with this, first I'm going to ask you to, to, to write something. Then a lot of times you, what you're going to do, you're going to read them what you wrote and say, Father, do you have anything you want to say? Sometimes it's only, he gives me like one cent, maybe one word, and I just start to write it. Then other stuff started coming. This is what I advise you to do. Don't judge what you're writing when you're writing it. Just write it. Then afterwards, then you judge it by the word and maybe people around you to see if it was really God. Okay? So just write. Write what comes up. Be vulnerable. Just write it. Don't worry about, oh, this sounds stupid. Just write it. Judge it later. So this is what we're going to do. Just before you start writing, I just want you to take a moment right now and just create that connection right now. Create stillness. And what you're going to do, you're going to write, I don't want to use the word love letter, but in, 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 in words, tell him how much you love him. And when you find that connection, you just write what's on your heart. Be vulnerable with him. So find stillness, focus on the Father. And what I do, I said, I, I, I bind right now every demonic spirit trying to interfere with me hearing from God. I break your power, and I bind you in Jesus' name. When you feel that connection, begin to write, write, write him a, how much you love him. Then when you finish, read it to him and say, Father, is anything you want to say? Take your time.
question. Whatever it might be, like me, I would ask, like, Lord, I want to be connected to you in this season. What, what steps can I take to be more connected? But you might have another question. I, I would advise you not, don't make it be like something for your child that's really traumatic right now. But just let it be a random question. Whatever you, whatever you want to ask the Father, just go ahead and ask him that, and then, then just get a response. Laura, is there anything else you want to say? Question one, good to ask is, Father, what do you think about me? assignment to do this years ago in the school and I was like this is stupid well, this is I can't say that word because they're kids <clears throat> this is silly and as soon as I started doing it I started ugly crying <laughs> and when I looked at y'all I saw a bunch of y'all ugly crying too <laughs> 
it's crazy. I, I don't I don't quite understand it. You know what I mean? But something about God's on it. You know what I mean? Did anybody was surprised? Was it hard for anyone? Sometimes it's hard for some people, yeah. Uh, and it comes with practice. Was it really easy? Was, is anybody surprised how easy it came? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, what about this? Does anyone want to be brave and share? trainer who has all the answers and you have all the tricks and the tips and the hacks I could ever imagine. I don't know if I can do this. You know, you have the secret sauce. And I started laughing at my, just laughing. It's the sweet taste like bluebell ice cream. It's just pleasant and oh, so sweet. Mm, smooth and pleasurable to the palate. Causing an, an addiction to desire even more. You, oh Lord, I see myself thinking, when can we do this again? When? It was such a joy, and you are so sweet, sweeter than the honeycomb, and you put the breath taking in my spirit. When you get that excitement, Lord, when I see you, and when I feel you, it's that. I love twirling in your presence and just saying, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, coming to you and knowing, and knowing you are my Lord. I'm trembling. He just overwhelms me, his presence, guys. Mm. Coming to you and knowing you are there and you cling to me and you're sitting in your chair like a father, rocking back and forth and your head back and you're back. Because you see the joy in me, that you're pouring in me. <sighs> Your presence, oh Lord, I only want more. And I want more. And I want more. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for being my love, for being my friend, for being my guide. You are my help and my strength. Oh, you, my little Deb. My dad used to call me that. He said, I see you full of excitement and so full of concern that you're hearing me correctly. Yes, my love. I have great things for you. And I want you to do and I want you to become. There's, there's an obstacle being removed and the opportunity is heading your way. Be careful. And listen closely and don't do it on your own and on your own accord. I will give you the words. I will give you the influence. I will fill your mouth and you will become my vessel who will minister to many, many, many. Too large for you to even think about because you struggle with you. You struggle. Who wants to hear from me? I do. I do. Wow. Because I know your heart. And I can trust you. And I can say what I can say. And you will be that one to say it with me and for me. You, my little Deb, are meant for me. And you are mine. And it started your path in 1987 when you were just a young girl before you even had your children. And your path is sure. I will lead you to others, and you will lead others to me. Your path is sure. Keep me by your side, and I will lead others and help you advance my kingdom. And you will get this. Why? Because I have you, and I love you, and you are my sweetheart. Yeah. Is anybody else? 
how you know it's you. Your heart's pounding right now. If you should share. Somebody heart pounding that you, that you think you need to share? Father, I love you with everything that's in me. I feel I, I fail you tremendously. I desire to live for you, to worship you. But most days I feel I'm so stuck, so far away from you, and I'm reaching for you, but you are so far away from me. I know it's me that's left, not you. How do I get back to you to be with that, that one with you? reply I love you my child you are mine I will never leave you nor forsake you I have not left you you struggle because you tried to do it alone I am here so give to me your struggles your sons your husband your family your job they're all mine anyways you just took them to do for yourself. I just gave them to you for a short time to love and to enjoy. Let me hold you, my daughter, and give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love you, my child, so never forget that I am here, just run to me and I will never leave you. Then Justin asked us to ask another question. Is there anything else that he had to say to me? And he said, quit worrying about who is your friend and who is not. Quit worrying about do they like me or do they not like me. My opinion of you is the only one that matters. You are my child my daughter now know your worth in me my child I love you unconditionally now go and do likewise hey that's brave to share your heart like that right how many could say that the two y'all heard that seems pretty biblical right <clears throat> does it feel like that guy was speaking so what that is, it's, it's kind of like a prophetic word to yourself. And, it's, and God uses that wineskin, and now you take that, and that's what you wage your warfare with. Stuff that he touched on in it that maybe you're struggling with now, he gave you truth. Now you take that thing out, and that becomes your truth because it's scripture. You know what I mean? But he spoke, he made that logos, he made the, the concept of God, he made it rhema to you in the moment. So I, does anybody else want to? If not, we're, we'll, we'll shut it down. Anybody else want to share? Everybody good? Everybody good? Anybody got, anybody got anything they want to add? <clears throat> At the beginning of the year when we were, each one of us was Steve and Steve preached that one Sunday and then I did the next. And the Lord said, I sent my word to heal them and deliver them from their destructions. And that's the word. You know, Dustin shared a profound way just to get in the Word. Debbie's a great journal. She's journaled forever, and I've always said, lay hands on me and give me that gift. But I feel like that was imparted to us this morning. And this is, I was excited as I was writing, asking questions and writing. I was like, this is something I've never done. I've prayed and asked the Lord things, but I've never jotted things down because I'm not a journaler. I don't even like to write. I'm not a good writer. When I write things for the school, somebody has to proof it before I can send it to the parents. So it's like this educator sent it out, and it's stupid. You know, it's like they say, uh, fishing's, fishing's, school's important, but fishing's importanter. You know, it's like it's more importanter to be fishing than fi the school anyway. But, but I just felt like the Lord said again when Dustin said anything else, that he sent his word, the written word. But he is the word, and he's always speaking. So take this tool, and when you go to that secret place, 
take that pad or I mean not necessarily Dustin's clipboard, but take paper and start journaling and start and then do like Dustin said and declare it. That's a word he's given you to sustain you this year and everything that you're facing, you know, and, and I will say this to you, Miss Angela, as you are reading some of yours, I'm thinking, that's what he said to me, because some of the very things that you struggle with, we all struggle with. You could read mine. It's the same stuff. You know, there's an old show, Dragnet, and at the beginning used to say, only the names are changed to protect the innocent. You know, that's exactly what the enemy does. He uses the same devices. And when he see we, that we respond that way to that in a negative, and he's beating us down and we're responding to that, and, and we're walking in fear instead of love, he uses it again and again and again. And so we have to get those words so we can take those words. Thank you for doing that this morning, Dustin. I appreciate it. Because this young man takes time and studies. And those things that God has equipped him with, I'm very grateful that you're taking time to impart them to us. And thank you. You know, thank you. There's some people that play instruments, play drums. For years and years, Stephen played drums from the first little set was from Sears catalog. It was a $50 set in our living room playing drums and just had that desire. But he drums as well as he does, like Chris and the guitar. And then where did, oh, and Josh on the guitar, on his uh, keyboard, because they spent time doing that. Dustin has spent so many years studying and he's equipped, and I thank you for imparting it. Just like I'm grateful for our musicians and Carrie up there singing and the ones that serve. You're blessing the kingdom. But I'm telling you, the Lord has said he sent his word to heal us, to make us whole, spirit, soul, and body, so we can be equipped to do what needs to be done in the kingdom of God in this season in this hour, in this day. He knew what was going to happen in America. He knew what was going to happen around the world. And he said, I'm equipping you and calling you to do what I need you to do in the earth for now. I don't really have nothing else, but <clears throat> when, when you was doing this, did you feel really connected at the time? And that's the purpose of it. So, thank you. Y'all was a good, I, felt, I, I didn't feel much at all really no you know resistance so so father we thank you that you're always here that you're never leaving nor you're ever going to forsake us we are one with you and we'll forever be one God help us focus on the reality of that truth by faith that everywhere I go you're, you go there's no longer an I but it's always a we so as we go out, Lord, let's go together. We acknowledge you. We love you. Let us become more aware of you in this season. Lord, we just release your blessing on everyone here today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys.